To finish the unit, we're going to go over how to write a quadratic equation. I'm going to give you two methods, and method one is on the front page. So to write a quadratic equation, remember standard form is y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. So your a value is the number before the x squared, your b value is the number before the x, and your c is your constant or number that comes at the end. So we have two different scenarios on the front page. One is given the zeros or roots, so that's x. So in this case, x is 2, x equals negative 3. And then the other case is when you're given a graph. So here I have x equals negative 5 and x equals 3. When you're given a graph, your final answer needs to be in the form y equals. When given the roots or zeros without a picture, it needs to have the equals zero. So no graph equal to zero, graph equal to y. The first thing you want to do in either case, once you have your x values, so down here, you write the factors that go with those roots. Once you have those factors, then you go through and distribute get your trinomial, and again, without a graph, you write it set equal to zero. Again, take your roots, write them as the factors. If the root's negative five, you're gonna have the opposite, x plus five. If the root is three, you're gonna have the opposite of positive three and negative three for the factor. Then distribute, so it's the full foil, and then for a graph, set equal to y. So let's practice. Number one, write a quadratic equation in standard form with zeros of 5 and negative 5. Again, a zero is also a root. So if one of the roots was x equals 5, it must have been the factor x minus 5. If the other root was a negative 5, it must have been the factor x plus 5. Now, because they gave me the roots uh, and not a graph, it's going to be set equal to zero. Now, x plus 5 and x minus 5 are conjugates, so we don't have to do the full FOIL. We can just do the first and last to get x squared minus 25 equals 0. And number 2, write a quadratic equation in standard form with a 1, 0 of negative 4. Well, if it's a quadratic, it has to have 2. This is the case of our double root. So we actually have x equals negative 4, negative 4. If you remember correctly, we just don't write it twice. But I need to write it twice in order to get the factors. So it would be x plus 4, x plus 4. Again, no graph, so set equal to 0. These are not conjugates, as they do have the same sign, so I have to do the full FOIL. So I distribute the x through, I've got x squared plus 4x. Distribute the 4 through, we have 4x plus 16. Combining like terms, it's x squared plus 8x equals 16. Or plus 16, not equals 16. It equals 0. And then last. So given the graph, okay, one root, we have x equals negative 3, and then the other root, 1. So when x is equal to a negative 3, the factor must have been x plus 3. A root of 1 must have been a factor of x minus 1. They're opposites. So now this is equal to y, though, because we have the graph. Doing the full FOIL, the x squared minus 1x plus 3x minus 3. Combining our like terms, x squared plus 2x minus 3. Remember from the warm-up, um, this number here is the sum of the roots. So actually when you add, you do get a negative 2. But remember, it's opposite down here. And then the last number, c, was the product. Negative 3 times 1 is negative 3. Okay? Now, what if this was the same, same roots, okay, but what if it was upside down? Okay. In this case, I would still have the roots 
of negative 3 and 1, and I would get this parabola here, okay, that trinomial, but if it was upside down, I would just have to multiply it by a negative 1 at the end to change that positive x squared to a negative x squared. So it would be negative x squared minus 2x plus 3 equals y in order to have it be upside down. So this is the upside down parabola. And this is the original parabola or the parabola that's right side up. So method number two, so on the back page, let's write the standard form at the top of the page. Is using the sum and product of the roots. So in a quadratic equation in descending order, that just means you go from x squared to x to the first to no x. So here's your two, here's the one, even though we don't write it, and then no x. Our leading coefficient, which is our a value, because that's the coefficient up front, that's always going to be of one in order to do this method. Okay? So a must equal one. So if we have a quadratic equation in descending order with a equal to 1, the product of the roots is the c term, and the sum of the roots, well, the opposite of the sum, which we indicate by a negative, is our middle term, or b. So I have some examples down here. Okay, here are the equations. with the roots up here. I wrote the factors, multiplied it out, just to show the work or method on the previous page, but I want to highlight again. So we have our b value of 1, c value of negative 6. So let's write that down for each equation. b of 2, c of negative 15. When there's no b, b is 0. So c is negative 25. Here I have b equals negative 8, c equals 16. Now there is a relationship between the roots and that b value and c value. If you look at the distribution, again this last term, negative 2 times 3, c, is the product of the roots. So down below our product r1 times r2, if I take the roots and I multiply them, so 2 times a negative 3, I get negative 6. That's the c value. Okay? That checks. Here are the product of the roots. Negative 5 times 3 is negative 15, and that's our c value. It checks. Product here uh, my two roots are a positive 5 times a negative 5. That's what the plus and minus means. Product is negative 25, and that's the C. And last, product of the roots, negative 8 times 16. Oh, I'm sorry, we're up top here. X equals 4. That's the double root. 4 times 4 equals 16, and that is my C value. So the c value of every equation is equal to the product of the roots. Now let's take a look at that b value. So I have a b value of 1. We said up top that we take the sum of the roots and then make it opposite, and that should match the b value in the equation. So if I add um, a negative 3 plus 2, I just tend to, when I have two roots and one of them is negative, I'll always write the negative first so I don't have 2 plus minus. So the sum of the roots is negative 1, but the, v va the b value is going to be the negative of that, or the opposite, which is a positive 1, and that checks. b is 1. Sum of the roots for the m next one, uh, negative 5 plus 3 gives me negative 2, and the opposite of a negative 2 is a positive 2. And we indicate that opposite just by multiplying by a negative 1. 
When I add a uh, positive 5 and a negative 5, I get 0. You don't need to negate 0, and you can see we don't have a b value, or b is 0. Some of the roots here, 4 plus 4 is 8, but again, we have to negate the 8, and that is the sum, or that middle term, b. So the middle term is always the sum of the roots, but it's going to be the opposite of that sum. So if I have a sum of 8, you just make it the opposite sign, and that's the middle. And then you take the roots, multiply them, and that'll give you the C term. So in the next example, number 4, we're going to write quadratic equations with roots or zeros of 4 and 12, 5 plus or minus radical 6, and 1 plus or minus 3i. So to do that, I need to add the roots and multiply the roots. So A, I'm going to indicate or use S for the sum. So my sum 4 plus 12 is 16. And the product 4 times 12 gives me 48. So there's the sum and product. And I'd like to write the equation that we wrote above. Whoops, we didn't write it above. Standard form of a quadratic up here, when a is 1, is y equals x squared minus the sum of x plus the product. And all that minus is indicating is the opposite of the sum that you get. So the opposite of a positive is a negative, opposite of a negative is a positive. So let's write that down below. So if I'm going to write this equation with the sum of 16 and product, it's going to be y equals, oops, it's not y in this case, my apologies, we don't have a graph. So that is a zero there. So let's go back up and change that to a zero. We only have the y when we're given a picture. So it's going to be zero equals x squared minus, now whatever I got for the sum, which is 16, it's going to be the opposite of 16, which is negative 16, plus 16x plus 48. So that's the equation. You could also do your um, x minus 4, x minus 12, to multiply through, little smile, negative 4x, big smile, negative 12x, which gives you the negative 16x, and then product, last, positive 48. You can still do it the other way, okay? You have that option. You could use whatever method you want, but with part B, you can't do it that way. We can't write factors based on uh, roots that have radicals in them. So for part B, you're stuck doing the sum and product of the roots. So if I'm going to add, now what are the two roots? Now written with a plus or minus means one root is 5 plus radical 6, and the other one's 5 minus radical 6. Now these are conjugates. And whenever I add the two conjugates, this positive radical 6 and negative radical 6 cancels, and we end up with 10. The product? Well, it's nice, too, also multiplying conjugates, because we don't have to do the full FOIL. We only have to do the first and last. So 5 times 5 is 25. Positive times negative, negative, and radical 6 times radical 6 is 6. So the product is 19. When I go to write the equation, it's going to be 0 equals x squared. My sum is a positive 10, so it's going to be the opposite, plus the product. So the sum you need to change to the opposite sign for the middle, but then the product remains the same sign. And then last, we're going to do C. So the roots are 1 plus or minus 3i, so the sum would be 1 plus 3i plus a 1 minus 3i. The 3i's cancel, we have a sum of 2. The product, we're going to do the first and the last, as these are also conjugates. 1 times 1 is 1. 
positive 3i times negative 3i is negative 9i squared. And remember, i squared is negative 1. So this is really 1 plus 9, which equals 10. So when I write the equation, it's going to be 0 equals x squared, because a has to be 1. The sum is a positive 2, so it's going to be minus 2, and then plus 10. The 10 remains the same sign. So on the back side, um, I'm going to give you two formulas or two shortcuts to find the sum of the roots and product of the roots without actually solving for x. So you could always solve for x, find the roots, and then add them and multiply them. But a shortcut would be to use the ratio negative b over a to give you the sum, and then c over a to get the product. Now, for questions where they ask you, like the question below, um, what the sum and product is, your leading coefficient, or a value, does not have to be 1, okay? So, the, what you want to do, though, is make sure it's in standard form, so equal to 0. And then, all you do is plug into those two equations. So, the sum, again is negative b over a, so a negative of a negative 20 over an a value of 5 is equal to 4. The product, that equation is c over a, my c value is 1, a value is 5, don't change it to a decimal, leave it to, uh, or leave it as a fraction. So what is the sum of the roots? The sum is equal to 4, and the product of the roots is 1 fifth. Now, for questions where they say to find the other root, meaning they give you one root, okay, and one of your missing coefficients, either b or c, you use the following formulas. So, in the left side, if you're given one of the roots in a and b, now, the a and b are part of the sum of the roots equations. So, when you want to find the other root and you know a and b, you want to use the sum, which is r1 plus r2, which just means when you add the two roots, the first root and the second root, you get negative b over a. Okay? Then you can find the c using c is a part of the c over a product of the roots, r1 times r2 equals c over a. If you have vice versa, if you're given a and c, you want to start by using the product of the roots. And then to find b, that's in the formula negative b over a, which is the sum. So let's take a look at two examples to finish. Number eight, if one of the roots of that equation is 1. Okay? Find the other root in C. Now, C is your question mark. If I know, so right now, this is what I know. I know the A value is 1. I know the B value is negative 4. And I, knew one, and I know one of the roots is 1. So the fact that I have A and B, I can find the other root okay, using r1 plus r2 equals negative b over a. So I substitute 1 for r1, and I can find the other root by plugging in the a and the b, so a negative of negative 4 over 1, we end up with 1 plus the other root equals a positive 4. Subtract 1 from both sides, and the other root is 3. Okay? So I've got the other root, check. Now I need to find C. We can only find C using the product of the roots. So product of the roots says that R1 times R2 equals C over A. Well, R1 was 1, so 1 times R2, which I just found is 3, equals C over A1. 1 times 3, I'm going to write this over here. 
1 times 3 is 3, and c divided by 1 is c. So I end up with c equals 3. Now to finish, so one of the roots, again, I know that one of the roots is 1. Based on the expression, I know a is 3. I don't know b. It's my question mark. But I know c is negative 4. So knowing the a and the c, that's the product of the roots. So r1 times r2 equals c over a. So r1 is 1. So I want to substitute 1 in for r1. So 1 times r2 equals c, negative 4 over 1. So 1 times r2 is negative 4. Divide by negative 1. Oh, I paused for a second. A is 3. Sorry about that. So it's 3 times R2. So I have to divide by 3. So R2 is going to be a fraction, negative 4 over 3. Sorry about that. I'm recording on Friday, which everyone has left. And I'm, pr I'm pretty exhausted, but I'm almost done. So again, I'm sorry. Um, B value now. In order to find B, we have to use the sum of the roots formula. So the sum of the roots is R1 plus R2 equals negative B over A. So R1 was 1 plus R2, which we just found, is negative 4 over 3. That's supposed to be equal to negative B, which we're trying to find, over A of 3. Now, because this is a fraction, this is a fraction, I'm going to rewrite 1 as a fraction of 3 over 3. So 3 over 3 plus negative 4 over 3 equals negative b over 3. In a fractional equation, when all the denominators are the same, I can solve by clearing the denominators and just solving the expression in the top or the resulting equation. So I have 3 plus a negative 4 is equal to a negative b. Well, 3 plus a negative 4 is negative 1. And divide both sides by negative 1. To get rid of the negative for b, we end up with a b value of 1. 